Gabriel, Gabriel, please come. Another two. Another two. So you want to say? You want to say? No problem, Rabbi. Let me just tell my wife. I'm going to tell my wife. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please. Please, please. Please, please. You want it to go live? No, better not. Okay. We wanted to make a presentation for people who are looking to pursue a career in the financial industry, like a career in life insurance, a career as a stockbroker. It's going to be a free event. Um, if people are not interested in pursuing a career in that, it's also going to be very informative. You're going to learn about how the stock market works and how life insurance works. So you get a lot out of this event. So please, guys, come next Wednesday, 7 p.m. in the show. Maybe, I'm not sure, we'll figure that out. But again, if, you, if you're not coming, or if you're coming, please send a friends that are looking for a job. Look, at this is one of the biggest things that we can do before the holidays. Rabbi. Hey, Rabbi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we miss you all. Our debate to today is going to be the Elul Mishmat, Abachur Tzayir Shem Niftar, Ben Me'amar, Yosef Ben Angela, Ruach Hashem Tzadchanu Meganeden, Tiyan Nishmatot Tzorua, Betzor Chaim, Mehmet, very young age, 21 years old. Kriya Shiyu Azei Elul Mishma. Uh, our show being sponsored by one of the biggest hearts in our community. Almighty God, we bless him with unlimited wealth. Daniel Abramos. Daniel, your heart is the only thing that is bigger from your body. <laughs> <laughs> when I see you, I see bigger heart working. Push, push, push. God will bless you to have unlimited wealth. You know why? Because if you're going to become a multi-millionaire, all the issues you want, the colony, the synagogues, the institute will be covered because you know how to give. Almighty God will share with you very quickly. I see Michael Shalom behind, said Rabbi, I put this message. Daniel. Okay, okay. Not so fast, Michael, but okay. Let's be part of the message. Ladies and gentlemen, we came back and we missed each one of you. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful trip to Europe. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I told you that uh, every time I'm going to Israel, my son tell me, Abba, you talk with the dead people more from what you speak with the live people. <laughs> because I love, I love to go to the king. And every time, Jonathan, I'm going to Israel, 
I'm going from one grave to another grave. And my child said, Abba, what about us? You need to speak with us. So these uh, 10 days that we went away um, was a surprise gift from uh, one of our family members. Uh, we, we, we call him Sabah uh, He's like a, like a father to us. He decides to give all of us a gift to send my family for 10 days. It was a very unusual after six years. The first time that the whole family went in together and I got stuck with my children and my wife and they, with phone no, the phone was not working. And Baruch Hashem, thank God, it was such a beautiful to get to know your children. <laughs> Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. You might know it was so good. It was so good to get to know. Amazing children, by the way. My wife is doing an amazing job. My wife is doing an amazing job. The guys are good boys, these guys. <laughs> But they grew up so hard. One of them is 20 years old, the other one is 18. But they grew up and they grew up. And they grew up. Wow. So my, my husband is a lucky man. Me and you and your husband will have a long life and enter yeah. in a happy life. Yeah. Yeah. Me and you and your husband will raise your children in the Torah, the Chupah, for the Maasim Tobim. Until 120, by Zat Hashem. In the Torah, 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 in the that went in to look for a, no, he was working in the company for 10 years. And he was always nervous, you know. Many people have this. They're always afraid to speak about money. They're always afraid to come to speak with the boss, especially when they're asking for raise, to raise the salary. Most of the people, they have issues. You know, they prefer to be the same salary because they're afraid. Lack of uh, confidence, lack of emunah and bitachon. This is something that you all have to fight with it. So this man, he came to his wife and said, listen, tomorrow, after 10 years, I'm going to ask, raise my salary. He was so nervous, he didn't sleep all night. One week before, he had a really bad flight. You know, he didn't know how to come. He came into the bus. And his wife is opening a, a light the candles. Rabbi Meir Balanes, Rabbi Shimba Is She's saying to him, he's coming back. He's, go, he's going into the bus, he's talking to the bus. And, um, you know, after he spoke with the boss, the boss was smiling and said, you know what, Moshe, you deserve it, 100%. How much you want? He said, listen, I need 25% more. If you got, you got 40%. You deserve it. 10 years, you didn't ask nothing. You're one of the best workers in this company. Why not? He was so surprised. He said, wow, I was so afraid for so long. And the answer came so, so nice and so fast. Wow, what a miracle. He's coming back home, so smiling, and you're not going to believe it. His wife, Eshet Chaim, they perform a beautiful dinner with champagne, with candles, kind of romantic, something nice. Ham and her in the house, sitting down together. And then he see a beautiful ladder, a beautiful ladder on the tables. He opened the ladders, what a romantic. My dear husband, I always knew that you deserve it. I had no doubt that they're going to say yes. I love you very much. He was so mesmerized. Such a Eshet Chai, such a wife. I mean that the wife is going to bring dinner from the dress of the wife, another ladder fell down. She didn't recognize, but it was another that fell down. He saw it right away. And maybe what did he do? He went to pick up the ladder and he opened the ladder. And what's the, what's the second ladder said? Doctor, why not listen to this ladder? And then the second letter, the wife said, my dear husband, no matter that they didn't give you the raise, you know, but I love you unconditionally. In my eyes, you are the greatest human being in the world. And I love you with all my heart. He literally started to cry. What did we need in life? What do we need in life? We need someone to love us, at least one person, unconditionally. I love you for who you are. You know how difficult it is to find in a marriage life? We grew up in the systems that I love you because. I love you because you're smart. I love you because you're washing dishes. You're making food. I love you because you're beautiful. I love you because you're bringing money. I love you. It's always because. It's always conditioned to our love. A minute that something is going wrong, we go in ballistics. Where do we see it? In our generation, when people just got married, in the first years, they have so much fight. 
so much argument, and I said, I don't understand. You just got married, yes, Rabbi, but I didn't know that it's like this, and I don't, I don't like him going with his friends. I don't like when he's smoking. <laughs> you only three, uh, three months married. When exactly you prove it, that you really love him, despite all the downside or the deficiency that the person has, are we really loving each other? Love meaning to accept the others, men or ladies, the way you are. If you cannot accept your, your spouse with all the deficiency, then you don't love him, you love yourself. I'm not, I'm going to talk about change, and this is the topic of today. But before we're talking about change, we have to realize one thing. You know what is Chodesh Elul? According to Hasidut, Elul and the Litvish side, and the Musal movement is a month of fear, shivering. When a lion is walking, who is not going to be afraid? How do you write lion in Hebrew? How do you write lion? Arye. Arye is? Aleph. Resh. Yud. Hey. You know what lion stands for? Aleph. Elul. Resh. Rosh Hashanah. Yud. Yom HaKippurim. Hey. Oshana Rabba. When these four holidays is coming, who is not going to be afraid? A month, we have exactly 40 days before Yom Kippurim. 20 days before Rosh Hashanah. A month that reminds all of us that in 20 days from now, I will tell you something that I remember from Orlando, Florida. I was a rabbi in Orlando, Florida 20 years ago, 21 years ago. I remember one incident that's sitting down in my mind. It might be that this is what Elul is all about. It was five guys that walk into the restaurant, happened to be the time the one that was in charge of the cashew of that restaurant. So I, I was, I had to be there. I'm looking at these five guys. They look like very wealthy people, according to the watch, to the suit, the way that they sit in, the car that they're driving. America, here we come. And they sit down and they order food like it's not tomorrow the most expensive items in the, in the menu. They didn't look, they came out to every restaurant, okay? The restaurant was not fancy schmancy. And still the bill came out $500. Do you know what you want to come to every restaurant? They order champagne, wine, steaks, anything in the menu to order. And you know what I remember it? Not because of the money. Because none of them ate anything. They left all the food, including the wine, and nobody touched anything. And they left. And I'm looking, and I said, I don't understand. <laughs> but the street, we're not allowed to throw food to the, to the garbage. And the Holocaust, who knows what is food? For one piece of bread, to take $500 and to put it in the drain? I was so upset. I came to the owner of the restaurant. They said, I don't know, what exactly happened with this nonsense? This not normal people. They came in, they ordered $500, $500 and they didn't even took a zip. Not even a zip of the, the, the wine. They took the most expensive wine that exists. They took steaks and nobody touched. He said, Rabbi Rachi, always judge in favor. I said, okay, so maybe you can enlighten my, my, my mind. What exactly they did? He said, Rabbi Rachi, there are 20 Jews, and there are the five, the main five, that opened a bank, fake bank, in uh, Orlando, in Florida. And they stole over $80 million with this bank. $80 million. It was, at that time, the biggest hit that Florida ever had. Five Jews and 20 all together. But five, the brain one, was these five guys. Five Jews. They opened a bank fake. Fake bank. And they stole $80 million. And he said, I'm acting, tomorrow is the judge. Tomorrow is the courthouse. Tomorrow they have to decide. And most likely, most all of them is going to go to 10, between 10 to 20 years in the jail. How can you eat when tomorrow you know that? And that morning, three of them succeed to run away to Brazil. They made a fake, fake passport. In Brazil, you know that Brazil do not have 
any agreement with the United States, anyone that did criminal act and ran into Brazil, as long as he does any Brazil, nobody can do nothing to him. Three of them ran away to Brazil. And I came back and I said, what is your This is what Chodesh Elul is all about. Chodesh Elul reminds us that in 30 days from now, we're all going to stand up in the courthouse. And the question is not going to be how many years you're going to be in the jail. The question is, who's going to be alive and who's not? Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Mikhail Nisama, a young boy in the age of 20, passed away. You know when exactly the decision that he's going to pass away happened? He passed away from the sickness. It didn't happen two weeks ago, not three weeks ago. And not six, ago, six months ago. You know when it exactly happened? Last year, in Rosh Hashanah. In Rosh Hashanah, he wrote down. And in Yom Kippur, he wrote down. From the life, from the death. From the death and from the death. When we sit down and relax, we feel so comfortable with ourselves. We have to remember that in three weeks, we're going to go, if we want it or not. And I have to tell you a secret. You cannot run away to Brazil. <laughs> because the owner, the judge, is the owner of the world. And no matter which place you're going to run in the world, the owner is the owner of the world. He's going to be, and they have agreement with him, and any place you're going to go. So you cannot go into Brazil. You cannot bribe the judge. You cannot make the jury disappear. You cannot use the mafia. We're locked down. And three weeks from now, we're all going to stand up once again. And the question is going to be, Next year, you're going to be alive. Next year, you're going to have some bite. Next year, you're going to have children or not. How is going to be your parnasan next year? This is the question that's going to be. Are we ready for this courthouse? Are we ready to come and to say, God, we come to the courthouse with confidence? So the first things I will tell you, Amelech Basadeh. In Hasidut, even though Chodesh Elul is a severe month, Hasidut come and tell you the king is in the field. Yitzchak, you know what you mean? The king is in the field? The king, the Almighty God come, and every day of Yom Kippur, we have Rosh Rosh Chodesh Elul, we have 30 midot arachamim. Every day in this month, we have only mercy. Come the Almighty God and tell you, I know that you have to change, but I still love you unconditionally. It's so nice to know that our Father, Avinu Sheba Shemayim, love us unconditionally. Every human being needs to know. Every human being needs to know that at least one person, your wife or your husband, love you unconditionally. This is the first approach. This is the first set of money that we have to have when we're walking into Chodesh Elul. Chodesh Elul, the Almighty God loves us unconditionally. With all the negativity, with all the Lashon that we spoke to our years, with all the movies that we watched that we didn't supposed to, with all the vacation that we went and it was a wrong vacation to go, with all the nonsense and all the anger and all the laziness, with all the days that you didn't wake up to Minyan and you had no reason. One thing I study about the vacation, and that one is, don't tell me you cannot wake up in Minyan. Tell me you don't want it. How many times I call people and I say, listen, come, every morning we have here Minyan, 6.45 Salichot, with coffee, cakes, you know, inspiring mood. We have tefillah, amazing, amazing experience. And people say, Rabbi, I cannot. Don't tell me I can. Don't tell me you cannot. I will prove it to you because we moved four countries. We came, we went into London, from London to, to France, from France to Madrid, and from Madrid to Barcelona. From Barcelona back to New York. And you know what's coming in all these four countries? The flight was seven o'clock. And you know what's mean to have flight at seven o'clock? You have to be there five, five o'clock. Five o'clock in the airport, meaning four o'clock you have to wake up. Five, seven, seven people, five children. And you know what they come and, they come and go? We never miss one, one flight. Why? Because there's something is important for you. <laughs> Four o'clock. <laughs> Tell your children you're going to Mickey Mouse. Tell your children we're going to Orlando. Three o'clock in the morning. Hashem, Did you need to wake up the children? They wake up. They, let, they, never, they will never let you sleep. They didn't go to sleep. They are excited. 
it the whole day. Tell you, if I'm going to tell each one of you, tomorrow morning or every morning you're going to wake up, you have five hundred dollar cash ready for you. Ash, ash, who doesn't wake up? Come on, five o'clock. Ben Adam Malekhanis, Kukel, five hundred dollar. Listen, imagine yourself if you get every morning. Every morning, the Almighty God is in the synagogue, waiting for each one of you. Private meeting with the chef. Don't tell me you cannot wake up. Tell me you don't want it. Because if you want it, nothing will ever interfere you to wake up and to come. We're coming in to Yom Kippur. We're coming in to Rosh Hashanah. We are ready in the mix of Chodesh Shemur. We have to do the Shema. We have to wake up. It's a time to wake up between the relationship between us and God and between the relationship between our husband and our wife. So what do we have to do? What do we have to do? Now that we understand that we wake up, do you know what's the secret of Rosh Chodesh Do you know what's the secret of Rosh Chodesh Elul? Rosh Chodesh Elul, the secret is, the secret of Rosh Chodesh Elul is, Ani letodi letodidi. What is the last letter of Ani? The last letter? Yud. Ani letodi, what's the last letter? Yud. Vetodi, what's the last letter? Yud. Lee, what's the last letter? Yud. What's the common ground? You know this Yud? Yud, Yud, Yud. Yud is how much? From Rosh Chodesh Elul until Yom Kippurim, we have 40 days. 40, if you're going to ask a person, if somebody will ask you in the street, which number, Mikhail, is the most luckiest number in Judaism? Simcha, which number is the most up, the most luckiest number in the Judaism? We have which number? They said 18, some people said 26. 101. What is? Eight. Eight. About nature. Correct word. You know which number? Which number mentioned most in the Bible, in the Torah? 40. 40. You know what's 40? 40 days was the, the flood. The flood. The flood was for 40 days. What else? <laughs> 40 years in the desert. What else? 40 seah for the mikveh. Beautiful. Moshe Rabbeinu. 40 days when the first time. 40 days the second times. And 40 days the last three times 40. By the way, Moshe Rabbeinu life was divided to 40. The first 40 years, according to most of the opinion, he was in the house of Paul. 40 until 80, he was in Midian. And 80 until 120, he came to redeem the Jews. Again, the number 40 divided the most luckiest number in Judaism and the Bible is what? The number 40. If this is so, why? Why 40 is so strong? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you what the Gemara said. The Gemara said, if let's say a man wants to have at least one baby boy. You know, you know the story? With this Moroccan guy that he had seven daughters. Seven daughters. One after one. He came to his wife and he said, that's it, enough for me. If you bring me another daughter, I'm leaving the house, don't leave. <laughs> enough, that's it. I'm trying, shall not buy that. Give me one baby boy, one baby boy. I'm giving you the whole nine months she's nervous, she's praying to God, please God. Make sure this time is gonna be a baby boy. At least one to carry the name, to say Kaddish, at least one. The child came and the doctor came, Mr. Buzasho, Bishat Tova, you have a baby? Go. Why? 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 He's getting upset, shouting, no way, there's no way! I'm leaving the house, I'm leaving here. Now, the nurse told them that, the doctor came right away. He said, Mr. Buzaka, why are you screaming? He said, this nurse, this nurse come to me and tell me that I have another girl. I have already seven of them. I ask one. The doctor said, can you relax? What's the number that you have? He's checking, you know, every baby that come. He checked the baby number, 
And he checked the father number, the, you know, the number. He said, no, no, I'm sorry, 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 I'm they come back and say, Mr. Bozakla, I'm sorry for the mistakes. Yeah. You have a baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's talking to his wife. You see, you see? If you're not screaming, nothing happens. Same with them, I was quiet, you know. <laughs> 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 Sometimes you have to scream. <laughs> you have to scream. You have to scream. Come back. Screaming. And you have to come back. And you have to come back. You have to scream. Yeah. If this is so, by the way, if this is so, what's the luckiest number of 40? I will tell you. The luckiest number of 40 is if your wife got pregnant and you just knew it in the first week, how many days you have to change the gender? The gender of the baby. 40 days. The Gemara said after 40 days, that's it. Either if he is a girl, he's going to be good. If he's a boy, he's a boy. You cannot change it except Lea. Lea that change. She pray inside and she change because she was supposed to have seven children out of respect to her head. She changed it to become Dina. She changed the gender. But in general, the Gemara said, why? 40 create reality. Gentlemen, ladies, if this is so, if a person wants to change anything in life, Chodesh Shedul is, is a beginning. You know, you know that it's a beginning? Chodesh Shedul in the calendar is which month is that? The last month of the year, right? It's like Chodesh Shedul is what? The last month, right? Chodesh Tishrei is what? The first month. I'm going to ask you a question. Any know that anyone that knows the answer will get free lunch in any restaurant you want. Sponsored by the Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> One of them definitely gonna agree, you know. <laughs> okay, Michael uh, said, go to the lawyer. <laughs> this week was good by the lawyer, it's okay. <laughs> okay Jonathan, they said that this week was good. Any restaurant you and your wife, you can go if you know the answer. But this is a bomb question. This is the question. If Chodesh Tishrei is the beginning of the year, and that question, Emmanuel, you cannot find in Jamaica Mystics. Only in the BJCC, you know, the picture. Uh, uh, if anyone in Jamaica State knows the answer, it's getting free. You're not a job. Okay. <laughs> Listen to the question. If Chodesh Tishrei is the first month, how come the name Tishrei is the last letter in the alphabet? Tishrei, tough. And if Chodesh Elul is the, is the end of the month, how come you start with Aleph? Supposed to be vice versa. Chodesh Tishrei was supposed to be a Wow. And Chodesh Shilom was supposed to be Tishrei. Make uh, it on the uh, You think, you're not alone, nobody's gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> I see, smiling, suddenly he's going next to the air condition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Avram, you want to become the sponsor or you want to answer? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> does that have to do with the Amit Bet coming in to speak about Hashem before creation? That's, I, that's it has to be with Avonis, what we spoke in the No, beautiful answer, but it's not answer. I'm sorry to do it. Yes, but I'm going to tell you a different answer. Different answer is a message to, to life, it's a message to life, and I wish that we're going to take this message. Yes, yes, the, Mona David, the president and the CEO of Coffee Club, yes. Maybe because And? And then all? Okay. Not bad, okay. Not bad. And then and, 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 No, I have an answer, it's only falafel wood. Okay, then, then, then. Okay, then, 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 then. Okay, Okay. Yes. Maybe because, like you said, there's never the end. Even in the beginning of the year, there's no such thing as the end. I'm going to combine that. And Tishrei, and Tishrei, and Tishrei. No, 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 I'm going to say the answer. In Tishrei, even though you're in the beginning, they said, Ezeu Chacham, 
הרואה את הנולד. המלד תשכר תשרי, you have to ask yourself, what's going to be, where exactly I'm going to be in the end of the year. That's like a shwama. מה זה נגושלש? אבטר דה קלאז גוטו דה נו. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
blaming others for your mistakes. We are so expert to blame the wife. We are so expert to blame the husband. We are so expert to blame our children or anyone around us for our mistakes. The first thing is stop blaming others. If there's anything that Shuvah is coming to teach you, Khatati, Aviti, Pashati. Ani Khatati. Ani Aviti. Ani Pashati. I'm taking full responsibility for my mistakes. When you come in to ask forgiveness, and this is another part, you have to realize that it was your mistakes. No, you know, every time you're trying to tell something to your husband, you know, ladies, if you realize that we are the husband expert, you come to blame us and we have the ability to flip it. And then after you, after you, five minutes later, you're the one that say, I'm sorry. I don't understand. You came in to blame your husband, but we have the ability to flip it in such a way. Professional, because of you, you didn't do this, and yesterday you did. Stop. I'm sorry. But how did it happen to change? That from him asking them so we are expert not to blame ourselves. You know who's the first one to do that? Adam Rishon. We continue heritage. When God came to Adam and said, What do you have from the tree? What Adam said? My wife. That's and then the wife said the snakes. But who is the first one? The first rule in Teshuvah. If you're coming into Hodesh, the first rule of Teshuvah is to remember, take responsibility. Do not blame others, and by the way, do not excuse yourself. Do not find excuses for your failures. Excuse is not, it doesn't mean to blame yourself. You know why I'm not successful? Because I came to this from this family. My family was not rich, my family is like this. You know what's the difference between successful human being to non-successful? Non successful of 1,000 excuses, why not? Successful of no excuses. He's working very hard to get to his goal. Don't find an excuse why you didn't wake up to me now. Just wake up. Wake up and come to me now. Do not find an excuse why you didn't put a in. Why Shabbat is so difficult. We have 30 days or 40 days before you keep in to make a difference. Wake up. Don't find any excuses. Number three, do not compromise to be average human beings. Most of us come with the, with the attitude to Rosh Hashanah, I'm not so bad. I'm not so bad, but it's always most people from In the relationship, every time you tell something to your husband, what do you want? Do you know my friends? Mm -hmm. They are 10 times worse. You know, I'm going to tell you what he's doing. Are you think that I'm worse? One second if you're going to meet. Who said that I got married with every human being? I choose you because I want you to be the best. You coming in to Rosh Hashanah, accepting yourself something that will change your life. Stop being average. Nobody likes to sit in economy class. Why not? You know it's so nice when you get surprised when you have a business class, especially first class. You walk in a special line. What is the feeling? Right? What is the feeling? You smile in all the way, and then you walk in the special line, special line, there's America. And suddenly you feel unique, right? You know, it's, to be economic class, it's economic, not that bad, but it's still economic. Do not be average in life. Do you want to be successful? Shoot to the highest. You want to have a good shallow life? Shoot to the highest. But I'm doing, I'm just taking the garbage. No, it's not good enough. I'm doing only dinner. No, it's not good enough. Shoot to the highest in relationship. Stop complaining. And start action. Action speak much louder from any word. This month is a month that we can start to complain on each other. And we can start to take upon ourselves much more actions. When I say actions, I'm talking about we're going to come in to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And the Chazal said, Uchuva, Utfila, Utzdaka, Maaviri, Troa Gezera. Not only in Shalom Bait, in your one personal life, I will ask all of you, and I will encourage all of you. Really, we have to add. Add in these three uh, paths. 
תשובה, תפילה וצדקה. You know what means תשובה? תשובה is to say I'm sorry. תשובה is to say God, I want to be back. תשובה is to accept in yourself in the next 40 days, to work in your anger management. You see, what's the difference between rabbis to a marriage counselor or psychology or professors? You know what's the, the, the difference? They are the ones that making the money. You know why they're making money and the rabbi is not? How would anyone? Because they focus and you pass. When you're going into psychology, the first thing she's telling you, can you share with me the way that you go up in the house? Mm -hmm. Now, sharing the way that your father acts with you because you want to go to the root, meaning, 10 session minimum. 10 session, $350 every session. He already made close to $4,000 in his pocket. He has to go into the back. Chodesh is, do not be stuck in the past. Move to the future. We are here to fix. It's important to know from the, from the past. But don't be stuck in the past. Move to the future. And the future is what? I accepted myself that to do the Shema. To do the shuva at least in one item. At least to accept it myself, to at least to accept it myself to put the fill in. But you're gonna tell me, Rabbi, I put the fill in. To accept it myself, Minyan. But you're gonna tell me, Rabbi, I wake up every morning to Minyan. So listen to what the Shlaka does right. And many other rabbis. You know what? You know what's the test of people that wake up in Minyan, wake up in Serichot, wake up in the net? You know what? To stay until the last Kaddish in the Tfilah. Anyone that lives before have no faith. The Shlach Kadosh right? have no faith in God. Why you live before and you say, why? Run into business, I don't understand. Are you going to lose? You know what the sages said when you say, you say, all the angels in heaven jumping. How fortunate is God that he has such a children. And they said, I don't know. I will tell you how important is Anilu Shabbat. Anilu Shabbat, how do you say Anilu? What's the first letter? Ayn. 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 what's the first letter? Ayn. That's the last letter, I'm sorry? Ayn. Done it. Ayn. Ken, what's the first letter? Ayn. Done it. Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad. Done it. What's it? Ayn. Done it. Ayn. Done it. Ed. Ve'ed. How many witnesses you need? Every time you say Adinu Shabbat in the morning, you have two witnesses that you came to Minyan. You left before Adinu Shabbat, you have no witnesses. No witnesses, you never did nothing. You never did nothing. You're missing the witnesses. Now you're going to come after 120 years, they're going to tell you, can you prove us that you wake up to Minyan? I wake up to Serichot. I had you Torah. I came to Shacharit. You have witnesses? My wife. Your wife is... It's Pasul. Today I went alone, she is your wife. She can, my children, your children is also, but they are your children. Give me witnesses. The rabbi, the rabbi got sent at me from the community. He's <laughs> also, we gave him donation. But the, the only witnesses is Alenu Shabbat. And we miss it. Shuma meaning to increase, to accept and accept mitzvah. And to do it in the best way. Do not just do it. Do it right. Nike said, just do it. And Rabbi Rakhine said, do it right. Don't do just do it. <laughs> do it right. You do something, do it in the best way possible. You come to the synagogue in the morning, pray until the end. How many times when your wife is asking you to wash dishes? And between the class guys, you know how we wash dishes. In poop is that she would never ask. We put water. Cold water. <laughs> Don't leave it on the second <laughs> What did I say? Do not just do it. Do it right. Tshuva meaning I'm going to accept it myself. Mitzvah. And I will do it. This is the Shuva. The Tefillah meaning to increase a prayer. To add. In Chabad, they have a tradition from the Bashem of Kadosh. Every day to add three chapters of Tehidim. Every day, add one chapter, add three chapter, add some in the Tfilah in Shmona Yisrael. When you said Rafainu, Barech Aleinu, Selach Lanu, Ashivenu, God made us Teshuvah. Stop and pause a second and be in the air and all the other that you ever did in that year. 
and said, Hashem, I'm asking forgiveness. Have a little kavanah in your prayer. The shuva is forgiveness, accepting a mitzvah. The filah is something to do with the filah. And tzedakah is to increase the level of charity. If until now you didn't give 10%, accept them you have to give 10%. Accept, accept them you have to give 10%. If you give 10%, add another 1%, another 2%. Add something to the car. If money is difficult for you, no problem. It's a different way to give to the car. One of the things that Dr. Emmanuel said, beautiful, is to hire Jewish people in your business. To help someone to have a job is the highest level of charity, by the way. Yeah. It's better for any money that you give. Tzedakah meaning, go to visit Bikur Cholim. Tzedakah meaning, make sure that somebody will have food in Shabbat, that you know that they are orphan widows. Tzedakah. This month, we have to increase in these three levels. And last but not least, last but not least, this is a little difficult, but I'm going to mention it. We still have four minutes ago. I'm going to give you a gift. And that gift is anyone that will do it. Guarantee. Guarantee that is not going to die this year. Anyone that will do it. Guarantee to be alive until 120. Guarantee that you erase 100 courses every day and you're going to get 100 blessings on a daily basis. God will bless you every day a hundred days. If you're just going to do what I'm telling you right now, guarantee that you will never see any sickness and any doctor in your life. You will never have a COVID-19 monkey cheek or tongue cheek. I don't know which one. Okay? Monkey part, I don't know what it is. Guarantee to have a long life and a healthy life. Guarantee. Guarantee to get Yira Chamayim. Ira Shamayim meaning fear of God, guarantee. If you're going to do this one, guarantee to get all the key for a hundred doors of blessing. Yeah. Listen to what the Zohar Kadosh writes. The Zohar Kadosh writes, every Neshama, every soul in this room that came here to this world, before the soul came here, the Zohar Kadosh writes, the soul, the soul came to God and said, we don't want to come down. God said, why not? He said, we are afraid from the only items, from the only human being, actually not human being, from the only angel that exists in this world. By the way, what's the name of this angel that every soul is afraid? Malach Amarit. The angel of death. So God said, don't worry. Stop crying, I have a key for you. I'm going to give you a hundred keys. A hundred keys to open a hundred doors. And if you're going to use it, even Malach HaMavet cannot touch you. Where do we see it? By the way, the first one to, to use this key is the first Jew. Do you remember the first Jew? What's the name of the first Jew? Michael, what's the name of the first Jew? Abraham Avinu. What's the first commandment that God gave Abraham Avinu? Daniel, what's the first commandment? Lech lecha. God is telling Abraham Avinu, go away. What Abraham Avinu was export for? Export. Hospitality, right? Did you ever ask yourself why hospitality? If I was Abraham Avinu, I would destroy. If I was Abraham Avinu, I would tell, I would, I would open a synagogue, bring everybody to synagogues. Why Abraham Avinu did hospitality? Tonight I'm going to tell you the secret. What's the first commandment of Abraham Aminu? Lech lecha. How much is lech? Lamed chaf is how much? 50. Lecha is how much? 50. 50 plus 50 is how much? 100. God is telling Abraham Aminu, I'm giving you these 100 keys. Your job is to spread. You know what the name of these 100 keys? This is Alakha Bashukhan Aruch. Chayam Adam Bechon Yom Levarech Mea Berachot. A person have to bless men and women. By the way, according to Hamavadia, woman is also obligated. You also need this obligated to make a hundred Baruch Hashem. A person have to bless God a hundred times a day. It's obligation. And if you're going to do it, because of that, the Bible will give food. Why? Because food, every food. 
ברוך השם פה מן המזונות, שהכל נהיה בטרור, מוציא נטילת ידיים, ברכת המזון, סיקס ברכות, every second he give why, because Abraham will want to make sure that everybody will get to what? to the lucky number 100. You know who is the second one that did it? You know who is the second one? Who is the second one that did it? יצחק אבינו. How do you know? What did the pasuk said in יצחק? והייתה יצחק בארץ ההיא מאה שערים ויברכהו השם. And יצחק planned and open a hundred gates, gates, and God bless him. Who is number three that did it? יעקב, you know, how do you know that יעקב? A son came against יעקב, how many, how many soldiers? How many angels? Four hundred. Tell me, every time we mention the name of God, Baruch Atah Hashem, how many letters is the name of God? Four, right? Yud Kev Avke, right? The merciful name of God is four, right? Yud Kev Avke. A hundred times four is how much? Yaakov Avinu went to fight by saying a hundred Barakot. When he said a hundred, he actually came in to four hundred against four hundred of the soldiers. Who is the one that made a hundred Barakot? The first one is Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, when he broke the tablets, the letter Samech and Mem came out. You know why Samech and Mem? Because Samech and Mem was American letters. Do you know why Samech and Mem was so, so unique? How do you write Samech? Anything in the middle? How do you write Mem? Mem so fit. Anything in the middle? No. Now, the Luchot, in the tablet, the letter was engraved. If I engrave Samech, how did the middle stay? If I engrave Mem, how did the middle stay? The only two letters that is no logic, that it was American letters, it was Samech Mem. When Samech Mem came out, Samech Mem is what? The name of the devil, in a short version. Samech Mem is the name of the, someone, she may say it, I will not allow to say it at night. But Samech Mem is the shortcut for the name of the devil. Moshe Rabbeinu got so frightened. He didn't know what to do. You know what he did? He made a hundred barachot. You know why? Because God told him the only way to fight the devil is a hundred blessings. You want to come to Rosh Hashanah and have guarantee? He said, God, you have to give me a life. You know why? Because I came once the night, three weeks before Rosh Hashanah or four weeks before Rosh Hashanah, and Rabbi Rabbi gave us the gift of life. What's the gift of life? Tshuva, I feel I was the God, but the highest one. Is to say every day a hundred blessings. Why? How much is Samech? Sixty. How much is Mem? Forty. Two hundred. <laughs> when you say a hundred blessings, even the devil that this is a hundred cannot go. The devil cannot touch you. When David the Melech in his generation, a hundred Jewish boys used to die every day. David the Melech came to Shmuel and said, Prophet Samuel, what exactly am I supposed to do? What Prophet Samuel told him? Make a hundred blessings. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, it's very easy to do a hundred blessings. I mean, you came here today, you made maybe three or four blessings. How about how do you get to a hundred? I will tell you how easy is that. If you wake up in the morning, right? When you wake up in the morning, what do we do? Modern. After that, we have Birkota Shacha. You know how many is Birkota Shacha? Twenty. 15, the blessing of the Shachar, plus Al Netirat Yadayim, plus Asher Yetzar, plus three Birkot HaTorah, how much? 20. You just open your eyes, you already have 20 blessings. Baruch Atah, Baruch Atah. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me the ability to see. Thank you. You already have 20? Come, right? Now, if you pray three times a day, Shmona Esri, Shacharit, Mincha, and Arvit, you know how many blessings we have in each one of them? 19 plus 19 plus 19. You know how much is that? 57. 57 plus 20 is how much? We are already 77 in. We have Tefillin, we have Talit, we are already 59. We have Baruch Shemar, we have Ishtabach, 81. 81 we are already there, right? Now we have four blessings in Kiryat Shema in the night, and three blessings in the morning, 88. We are already 88. If you are Israeli, it's so easy. Because what's the difference between Israelis and not Israel and American, perhaps? American, they don't like bread. Israeli with no bread is no, is no meal. <laughs> I mean, I, we don't like cake so much, but bread? I don't know. Every Seuda, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, bread meaning Birkat Amazon. 
Birkat Amazon meaning six blessing. Twice you eat bread a day, twelve. We are ready in one or two. Now, Shakon Yabit Varo, Asher Yatsar, when you're coming out from the bathroom, Ashakon Yabit Varo, maybe ten or fifteen times a day. Now, yeah, we are ready in 120. We didn't do anything special. We just do everything regular. You don't even have to come to Minyan. You don't even have to come to Minyan. He looks at that. Wow, wow, what have you make me look at this? Why? You make me black heart. Enough, let my people go. They're in three countries. Gentlemen, you didn't do nothing and you're already in 100. You're already in 120. What's the big deal? I'm giving you life. You come to Russia tonight, you said. God, give us life. You know why? Because I did 100 blessings a day. Thank you very much. Wow. 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 Wow.